Hey gang, Rod at East Coast Lumberjack. And I want to do a three-part series now. We want to get down to brass tacks and talk about axe handles and how I actually make them. How you can make an axe handle. And it's one of a number of ways that you can make handles. Some guys will actually sit down. I know Levi Grant. He was a renowned um, ranger and outdoorsman here in the province. Guide. Uh, world famous. He always used to sit down and, and use his hatchet and... Uh, draw his pattern out on his wood and then hatchet it out and I've seen some guys on the internet that actually do it that way other people of course have uh, machines and will run them out in a machine here at East Coast I do it on a bandsaw uh, for the most part I do most of my cutting on a bandsaw and then finish it off by hand so I want to show you in a three-part series how I, how I do that uh, from scratch so right now if you look at the YouTube channel we have how to pick out a good tree, how to read bark uh, before you actually cut the tree. Then once the tree's in your yard, I look when I'm uh, processing it and splitting it out by hand, I'll look at uh, how to read the bark on the outside so you can actually pick the best bolts from your log, your three foot log. And then of course they come out in a piece like this, which I call a bolt. So I use the outside sapwood right out here. This is actually the best wood for a handle. And of course, if you if you split it out and do it the way I've, I've uh, mentioned, your grain always runs with the eye. And we know from tests, uh, we've also done a series of tests here that uh, that that's the strongest handle wood. So the process, um, even though the most popular question I get is how long does it take you to make an axe handle rod? And my question is always, well, it's hard to say because there's steps in the process. And what I do is, of course, I split out all my wood. I've been doing that the last month. I split out uh, 13 hickory logs. And I think I'm up to 30-some uh, bolt, uh, three-foot pieces of ash that I've collected from around the province. So quite a number of, of wood. So I, I do that, of course, it, it took, took me a month to do it, okay? evenings, weekends, whenever. So that's all part of the process. So because it's done early, of course, all people really talk about is, you know, when you have a block of wood like this, how long does it take to cut it out of the bandsaw and finish it? And again, that's kind of a, it's not really a fair question because there's a lot more that goes into it. And then, of course, it has to sit for a while and dry. And my hickory takes about a year to dry. I should take, tell people it takes about a year to make a handle. <laughs> Hickory. But what we're going to do today, I want to show you from the bolt. So we've done that in a series, uh, how, to, how to find trees. I may do another one on that when I get in and, and show you some wood at, at the university. Then also, I've done a series on how to split it out. Did a series on properties of, of wood. And now this uh, series, a little mini series, is going to be on how I actually make a handle. So if you have a bandsaw, it doesn't have to be a big bandsaw, but a bandsaw is really helpful. And I'm going to tell you the little secrets that I've learned over the years that will save you a little bit of time when you're making an axe handle. Sorry about the preamble, but it, it sets the stage. <laughs> Whenever I want to get on and find out how do I do something, and the guy talks for three minutes at the start, I go, man, just get to the axe handle making. Okay, well, that's what we're going to do. So I have patterns here. I'll uh, hook you just for a minute. I'm charging right now. <laughs> my battery's low. Uh, but I have a lot of patterns. And my patterns basically have originated from handles that I like or that people have asked for. So this here is uh, a handle out of a racing axe, a uh, Tuatai racing axe. It actually used to belong to Eddie Fawcett. It was his personal handle. Eddie Fawcett is a manufacturer of two tie axes and saws in Masterton, New Zealand. Great guy. I've bought axes and saws from him for over 30 years now. And this handle is a really nice feeling handle. Fits your hand beautifully. That's my, one of my race and axe handle patterns. I have other ones here. This one here is a Haltus 4. It's, uh, it came from my pal Darren Hudson, who runs the Timber Lounge in Moncton and the Halifax, and he wanted those that style handle for his throwing axes, so I kept it here for that. This, of course, is uh, Wayne Moore's vintage axe handle. We just made that a couple of weeks ago. It was a really nice one. This here is a real curvy one. It's called a Curvy Girl. That's from uh, Brad at Vintage Axe Revival out in uh, Minnesota. There's uh, hatchet handles here. Uh, one of those came from Loghead Axes and uh, Hatchets in 
Timmins, Ontario, my buddy Dave out there. The uh, American Felling Axe. Somebody just asked if I could make one of those, and I, of course I looked it up online, found what an American Felling Axe looked like, drew it out, made the pattern, and of course that's one of my best sellers right now. And of course there's a cruise, there's a double bitters. This is another Aussie handle. Oh, this one here, this is becoming very popular. This is a Spanish Bax, uh, Basque pattern. So that's what they use over there. The guys that chop for, you know, half an hour at a time. <laughs> Amazing guys. So those are my patterns. And what we'll do is we'll take a, we'll actually come out. And this is where my, I store my ash under the steps here. So I'll get a bolt from this pile and, uh, and bring it in. My hicker I keep right in here. And there's my uh, stash of hickory right now. It's all dried and seasoned, so it doesn't come in the shop until it is. And of course, once it is seasoned, it comes in here and then we process it. I'm going to plug it back in again so the battery doesn't die. Okay. So the next thing I do is I take a pattern. So right now I'm making handles for a, a really neat guy. His name's Carl Peterson from Edmonton, Alberta. Really neat guy. He uh, makes axes, uh, pack, pack axes for horseback riding in the backcountry. And he was out in the backcountry years ago and a student of mine, uh, Malcolm Cole from Coles Island, was out there. He was working uh, in the woods that summer in, in northern Alberta and he and Carl happened to meet on the trail out there and were talking about different things and Carl was going on about the axes that he made and was saying how he couldn't find a good axe handle. And Malcolm, he was on the woodsman's team you know, I made accent and said, hey, why don't you try a rod at the East Coast Lumberjack out in New Brunswick? And they exchanged numbers, and the next thing I know, I got a call from Carl Peterson, and he said, hey, you, you make handles, young fella, and he said, I've made a couple. And I've been sending Carl out about a dozen handles every year for the last, I, I, I don't know, it must be almost 10 years now that we've been at it. So, real neat guy, and calls me up every spring, early summer, and we have a good long talk on the phone, and then he orders a bunch of handles. So this is it. He likes these uh, Hetherington, my Hetherington pattern. Uh, that's the one, the guy that showed me how to make handles. This was one of the last ones he made before his retina detached and he couldn't see much anymore. So it's a nice little, it, it's a nice handle because it has a small little font spot and your hand fits right in it. So this is small and a lot of guys like it. Usually this is uh, people that order a boy's axe. This is typically the pattern that they'll use. He likes it for the pack uh, pack horses because it packs well. There's not a big swell out here that takes up a lot of room and is bulky. So this is the one I use. So all I'm going to do is lay it down on the wood, and I'll I'll look at the wood. Sometimes there's a little a few wobbles in the in the wood if there was a knot on one part of the tree or another. And then I'll take my black sharpie. That's the wrong one. There it is. This is the that one there was a fine tooth, this one isn't. And what I'll do is I'll basically just trace out around the handle. So I'll set you down here so you can see. So here's my handle on my bolt. And I'm just going to... He wants 28 and 29s. So this is a 28 inch pattern. So I'm going to draw the bottom part of the handle. And I'm just going around it. If, if somebody wants a bigger handle than what my pattern calls for, I'll actually leave the marker tipped a little bit so I actually trace a little bit wider pattern. And then what I'll do is I'll just move it up. Once I've drawn it on, I'll move it up that inch because he wants a 29. And that moves the neck of my pattern up to where it should be to accommodate him. Okay, so the neck is really what's... So let, let's talk about that. When, when people order handles, they, they're always asking for a certain length of handle. And typically handles are measured from the butt right to the top of the handle. But lately, a lot of guys have been asking for extra at the head because they want to hang their axes proud. So they want a little bit extra at the top. So what that does is that sometimes that makes a handle appear a little bit longer. Typically, if you want to, if you want to get an exact length of handle, give me as many measurements as you can. And from the very tip up to the neck is a really good measurement because that's the length of the actual handle itself. And then I can make the, uh, the eye higher, shorter, whatever you need. So this is a 29. So I'm going to go back here and retrace it on the upper side there. So that's, that's my pattern done. So, so what it looks like, <coughs> if I can bring it over. Okay. So this is what it looks like. 
and you can see the black line here just goes up and I've drawn it out in the wood of course if you do if you do the initial stuff right if you do splitting it out properly and you let it dry properly you always look for a nice straight grain all this stuff here just falls into place so you, you need to know that that in order for the handle to come out right you do every step of the process properly and then when you get to this stage it's it's really quick you just lay it down you draw it out i know my grains already going straight so away we go so i've laid that down drawn my it's now 29 inch pattern then what i'll do is go out and cut it out on the bandsaw so what i i usually will leave my pattern the, the 29 inches of course we know that my most of my bolts are 36 inches so i'll bring it in from the ends and that's in case anything is uh ash doesn't check nearly as bad as hickory as you can see here this is the end of the ash log there's no checks there at all in the wood on either end but just the same i've left my pattern in about uh two inches here and about i've got all kinds of wood here i've got about six or eight inches here and then what i'll do is i'll use that to make my wedges out of once i cut this off if it's nice grained wood, I'll save that stuff and then I just flop it, cut it into a square and then draw my lines and make wedges. I'll do a video on that, show you how to make wedges. It's pretty easy to do. So now my pattern's ready for the bandsaw. So I did it this way. I actually carved out a bunch of these already so that you don't have to watch run the bandsaw forever. So once I take it over, I'm going to cut this pattern out. So once I've cut this pattern out, this is what we get. Okay, so I've taken, there's the pattern there. I've cut both sides off it and this is what's left. Now, a couple of little tricks from the East Coast Lumberjack. When we go back to cut it this way to get the proper width of the ax handle, <clears throat> we're going to want to make sure it's straight. So what you want to do, you want to line up this. What I usually do is I do it this way, look down the eye and I look towards that end, you can see it right there, that actually looks really good. So this has to be level with this down here. If it isn't, as that's going down through, you're starting to cut this way, and then when it hits that on the other end, it tips it, because your butt here isn't parallel with this line. And if it tips it a little bit, then your handle has got a wow in it. Okay, so that's a, that, I learned that the hard way. I, I had a tough time at first trying to keep those things straight, and I realized what it was, is I wasn't lining, these, these were not parallel. Okay, that's a, that's a big trick for, for using it in a bandsaw. The other thing I'll tell you about a bandsaw, when you're tensioning a bandsaw, I learned this from uh, R&D bandsaws out in uh, Ontario, that's where I order all my bandsaw blades. I usually get them about a dozen at a time. And they'll tell you in there to properly tension a bandsaw blade, do not tighten it way down. And a lot of guys will do that. They'll actually tighten their knob and actually make it just singing tight. Don't do that. Actually, you'll find a heart. You'll have uh, your bandsaw will travel in the wood a lot more than what you want it to. So a few things on that: you put your bandsaw blade on, and it's just feathering. It's just uh, dancing just a little bit, so it's loose enough that you can see that movement. And you just tighten it down enough to take that out, so it runs nice and straight. Don't tighten more than that. That'll keep your your blades will last a lot longer. It'll cut a lot easier through the wood. And if your blade, as you're as you're feeding your your wood your stock through the bandsaw if you start having to put a lot of pressure on your blades getting dull and usually it will also travel then don't fight with it take it out then replace your blade away you go so once we do that what we're going to do is we're going to lay our other pattern down on it so i'll put it here so you can see it and right here okay so now what i have for that is i have a piece of and I use this actually hardwood flooring because it's nice and straight. Okay, hardwood flooring is nice and straight down that way. So this is what I use. And it's what I did is I cut it out to shape the pattern of my most popular handles, which is this one here is shaped for a double bitter cruiser. This one's shaped for my racing axe patterns. And it comes, it fits pretty close on my Hetherington patterns. The other thing I do is I use a carpenter's pencil because it's flat on the sides. Because what happens is sometimes you'll have a little gap here, as you see right here, there's a little gap right here. And if your handle isn't flat against your a flat piece of wood like this, it'll actually travel into that little 
hollow in here and your and your line will not be perfectly straight so what I do I lay my pattern on like this and usually look up through your grain follow your grain along your handle and line this up so that it's nice and straight along your grain so you don't get run out that we talked about so then I take my carpenter's pencil hold it up nice and straight run it the whole way along that and you'll get a nice straight line Okay, so that's my pattern along the back, and I've moved it so that I'm catching all the grain, so it's nice and straight grain the whole way along it. So that's another little trick from the East Coast Lumberjack to keep your uh, handles running along your grain really nicely. So now what I'll do is I'll go back to the bandsaw. Another another trick <laughs> for a long time. I had a really tough time getting the kerf straight here without leaving a little bit more wood on one side than the other and for whatever reason it was tipping in my in my band and I couldn't figure it out even though the bandsaw was flat I was laying the wood flat so now what I'll do when I'm going to cut it this way is I'll cut about two inches in on this kerf pull it out cut my kerf then come back here and cut in on this side and finish the whole way down through so when I do that one and then straight one here and I'll, I'll do it just quickly over there in the bandsaw so you can see what I mean. You can see me. So I'm, I'm going to show you that very quickly. Turn it on. So what I've done, as you can see here, I've cut in on this side, and I come in here and I cut my kerf, and I start, and I'll go the whole way down this far side. But you can see what that does, is that lines everything up now nice and straight. Okay? So that's pretty, that's pretty key to the whole process. So once I've done this, the whole way, I get this shaped bolt. Okay, the next thing you want to do, once this comes off the bandsaw, the first thing I do is I look right down the barrel. Say, how straight is this? And as you can tell, this one here is nice and straight. Okay, so when it comes off, it's just as straight as a die right there. If it isn't, sometimes your bandsaw will move a little bit. Don't sweat it. Sometimes you'll see a little bulge on one side or the other. I just put it back in the bandsaw, straighten that bulge out so that, so that it's nice and straight as a die the whole way down it. And once it's like that, then I'll go back over and I'll just tip it and take off these corners. So I'll take a fair bit off the top where you're, you know that the your eye comes in. I'll take a fair bit off of there. And then I'll just take the corners off on the back side. So when I'm done that, it looks like this. This one's been hanging for a bit over there. So I've taken the, the back corners off and you can see the front. I've taken them off a fair bit up here. And that just saves you a whole lot of rasping. Okay, so that's that's a product from the bolt on the bandsaw to your where we're going to finish it in the vise, and I'll show you the tools that we use for that and how I do it. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot of run out on any of these handles. That one's just a little that's a little a little piece of grain right there, but basically that one that one grain runs a whole length of it. Here we've got well that's you're always going to get that down here at the at the bottom but there's one right there that's all that's run out on that one so remember my rule of thumb this one here is quite a few grains so one traveling out is not a big deal at all this one here same thing uh, there's one here and then that same one goes the whole way up through this one has only uh, I think it has five or six but it's quite rounded so this this here came from a young tree you can see that how the the rings are really wrapping around so so that come that come from a smaller tree so what happens is your your uh, growth rings wrap around a lot more and sometimes those will move sometimes they actually will cup on you a bit so I usually I usually that's why I usually use 12 14 16 inch logs for my for my handle bolts okay so that's number one in the series on how to make a handle using a bandsaw 
laying your pattern down, how to change your length of your handles, and cutting them out on the bandsaw. So we'll come back next time and I'll show you how to finish them in the vise.